Welcome back to Bend and Fishing. I'm your host, Josh Treadwell. Today we're going to be going, we're going to be bouncing around one river system where they stock a ton of trout here in New Hampshire. So I'm going to be bouncing around from spot to spot. Um, a lot of these places have been already kind of like cleaned out and poked out. So I'm going to have to try some like finesse techniques with the fly rod to catch whatever smarter fish are kind of like leftovers. So follow along for the ride. I'm also going to show you my favorite fly and three ways to fish it. I'm gonna hop the fence here. So this is my favorite, absolute favorite is fly, an olive woolly bugger. And I fish with, I fish this all the time. So olive woolly bugger, right? And this is olive tail, black, kind of hackle, tungsten cone head. I will basically pause the video right now and I post a picture of all the stuff I use to tie this fly. So I tie it myself. You can't buy it at stores, but I find people don't tie it like I do, so. I tie it a very specific way, and it actually really works very well, obviously. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, and uh, I'm gonna stand back from the shore. First thing that I do, John, I'm gonna use it as a searching pattern. So I'm gonna cast it out as far as I can, and I'm just gonna strip it back. Since it's resembling a minnow, I don't, don't really have to pay attention to whether I'm dead drifting it, whether it's swimming upstream or downstream. Stock trout don't usually care that much, especially if they're new to the system. So that's one way to, my favorite way to fish it, this is actually legit like a streamer. And so we have, we have a little back eddy on that side, which looks really good. So that's one way to fish it. The other way to fish it, so I have probably a seven, not even a seven foot leader on there because I haven't changed my leader in a while is to basically swing it. So I'm gonna put some men's in my line and I'm gonna let it basically sink to the bottom on the other side over there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And that's gonna sink my floating fly line down to the bottom because the, the fly is pretty heavy. I tie it with lead and tungsten because that's where the fish are at the bottom. And I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna go under this bridge and cast of course because if the stock trout have caught on a little bit, they don't want to get eaten by ospreys or anything like that, so they will uh, they will hide under the bridge. No chasers, normally there'll be a chaser. So I'm going to try the first two methods, and that's what's versatile about a woolly bugger is it kind of resembles three to I think three or four different species of food basically. One being like a little tiny bait fish. Two being like some sort of stonefly or caddisfly or something like that, or some sort of bug that crawls on the bottom. So no matter which way you fish it, it's kind of always looking like the bait that it's supposed to be, right? And I'll teach you kind of a fourth way to fish it. You can actually high stick it, so cast it out there. It doesn't really cast very nicely, but you can also high stick it and kind of look for ticks on the bottom. And look for that line to stop. Either it's going to be hung up on something or it's going to be caught on a fish. Nothing yet. So we're going to try this spot for a little while. This is a pretty road easy access spot uh, where people can fish. And I might switch to a different color of this. So right now I have olive on, which is my favorite. I've caught everything from salmon, crappie, bass, bluegill, literally everything on this. And then Everybody always assumes that like stock trout will go downstream when they're stocked and that is not always true. They'll actually go upstream, they'll go actually wherever they want, uh, wherever they think it's safe. So I have waders on, I probably don't need waders on for most of the stuff, just like high boots would work. I'm going to cast under that tree over there while I'm getting eaten by freaking black flies. Oh, I just got bit for sure. That was definitely a fish in there. Saw a little bit of flash. So I'm also wearing very nice polarized glasses. They're not super expensive, but they are really nice. They're a little bit scratched up because I've had them for about a year and a half. But they're Rios gear. I'll leave the link for them below. They're one of the people that I work with for my fishing stuff. And it's gonna keep stripping this in. I know there's a fish over there somewhere. And I can also try different angles of approach, right? And I can also do that drifting, dead drift technique like I was showing you over there. And I'm not switching flies, I'm not switching to a nymph. I'm not 
changing leaders or anything like that. All I'm doing is changing my presentation because I trust this fly no matter what. I would say I trust this fly with my, my life. Even if I was literally on a stranded island and needed to survive and I had one fly to bring, I would bring this one no matter what. Let's see if they're on that far riverbank there. So the other thing we can do while we're here, right, let me show you the third way that I fish this. I fish this with a small indicator or a big indicator, or basically a bobber. So I will put this up on my leader, about one and a half times the water depth. And I know the water depth because I can see it with my polarized glasses. And this might be too light of an indicator. This is like the small one, I think. So it might sink instantly, but I have bigger ones as well. That's gonna get me a natural presentation, a natural drift, basically. And it's too heavy, but we'll try it anyways. Just below the surface. And we wanna mend our line to keep that thing drifting nice and neat. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on a bigger indicator here in a second. And these are, I think called airlocks or thingamabobber. There's two different, two different companies that make them, I think, or maybe it's the same company. And I'm using a four-way fly rod. You can use a five-weight or anything bigger than that if you want. But this four-way is just enough to throw that stuff out there. And so I'm not ticking bottom at all. I'm not seeing that, that indicator twitch at all. So I'm gonna take one more cast up closer to me and see if I can tick bottom, see if it, the pool dips a little bit. And it doesn't appear that it does, so we're gonna move that indicator up until it starts to tick bottom. All right, so we moved our indicator up a little bit, so we're gonna be prepared. I'm gonna bend that line upstream a little bit. So we get a natural drift. That's even deeper than I thought. So let's actually hop in the water here. And the closer we can get to the drift, the better drift we will get. That water is cold. Move this up even more, which is gonna make it a little bit more painful to cast, but that's okay. Ooh. That was definitely a bite, and we're just waiting for that indicator to go down, obviously. There just, just must be a rock right there. And we're also gonna go up towards that fast water up there as well. This water looks juicy. So that's my three ways, three ways that I fish it. So strip it, well, four ways that I fish it. So send it out there, use it as a search bait, which is my, probably my most efficient way. And you can fish it downstream, you can fish it upstream, you can do short strips, long strips. Um, you can present it really any way you want because it kind of resembles a crawfish, kind of resembles a small bait fish or a minnow. And I did have that one chase, so I know it still works. I have this little back eddy right here. I'm gonna kind of drag, drag that right through there. And notice how I'm, I'm literally varying up my technique all the time because I know this fly works. If this color doesn't work, I'll switch to white, which is even like more of a search pattern because then I can see it and I can see how things are chasing it. But I have that gold, gold cone head on there. Like I said, I'll leave all of the, the, the recipe as they call it for the fly in the description and I'll do a little screenshot of all this stuff. I'll, I'll kind of lay it, all, I'll lay it all out for you. For those of you that tie your own flies. All right guys and girls, we tried to get some fish. They just haven't stocked the section of the river that I was checking out close to home. I only had about two hours to fish, but nice day. Black flies got me pretty good in the forehead there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, we'll be doing some more trout fishing coming up shortly, but the next couple videos are gonna be basically ocean fishing because striper season is already started.